warning. This video contains real questions, real answers, with real people. We're going to be answering your questions about our journey, our life, and, and our, our marriage. marriage. This is us. This is the, the Cole, Cole family. family. Wait, something's missing here. Does anyone, I'm going to go to Blue's Clues. I'm going to have a Blue's Clues moment. Does anyone know it's missing? <gasps> Do you see someone? It's blue. It's blue, everyone. There he is. Yeah. We found blue. Oh, wait, here come oh, our kids. Lord. What's up, everyone? Woo! Hey, hey. What's up? No, what am I doing? What am I doing with this? What? What's up? Okay, here we go. Hype me up, hype man. Hype me up. What's up, everyone, and today, we are back for marriage Q&A part two, or part dos, okay? A little Spanish for you people. So thank you everyone for your patience. It's been a little over a week since part one, but the past few weeks, some exciting things have been going on and we're gonna be sharing it with you guys on this channel really soon. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed, hit the subscription button on whatever side it's on and make sure you hit that little bell right next to it so that way you're subscribed, okay? Subscribing is for free, so you should do it. I'm just saying. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some real topics. We are going there, okay? We are going there. I need that to come on the screen. Type this on the screen. We are going there. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about some real conversations, real topics on our journey, our personal journey. We've been through, you know, a bit of a journey. So uh, we're gonna get into that today. We are going to take you a bit on a journey uh, back when we first got married in 2016. Stephen Cole was 20 years old, little baby. So the next question comes from Tiona Johnson. <laughs> and it says, what is the greatest obstacle? Okay you have had to overcome as a couple. Okay, so in 2016, we first got married. We were young little babies, not extremely young, no, but he was 20, I was 21. Um, we were madly in love and had all these hopes for our future. Um, he went into the military and when he went in, it was like, it was very close to when we had first gotten married. It was two days. We got married on a Friday I and I three. left. I left, well, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Monday, so okay. three days. Yeah, two, two three days, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I left on that Monday after we got married. Went off to the military. Um, yeah. And there was a part of basic training. Uh, I'll say about two weeks before graduation, we were going down a repelling tower. And I was complaining that, you know, my gloves were faulty. Um, and went down the tower and the rope just kept slipping and I fell and uh, hurt my back. And when I got to the, uh, the hospital, you know, they do the diagnosis, MRI, things like that. Um, and they were saying, oh, you have this disease. I'm like, what you mean? What you mean disease? And so, uh, so, you know, they were saying, oh, you know, well, with the disease you have, we have to send you home. I'm like, what? Because it's, they said it would pre have been pre-existing. So when he called me, he was at the hospital and now instantly everything we planned was now Gone. crumbling we you know i was gonna go where he was stationed after he graduated basic training our family was gonna be okay you know at yeah, the time money they were gonna give me a forty thousand dollar bonus you know i scored extremely well on my asvab so i got to pick the job of my choice all these things were lined up you know the homes you know the the, the policies the insurance everything benefits but when they were saying they were sending me home, none of that was coming with me. Um, so I not only went yeah. home with nothing, no job, no money, no insurance. Now I'm ended up with no place to stay because at the time I didn't have a place of my own um, and she was staying with her parents. So because of that, I had to go to her dad and say, hey, I'm hurt, broke, with no car, can I stay here? And he was gracious enough to be able to do that, uh, to say yes. But now not only 
saying that, I also had to face the fact that I am now a father of two kids that are on the way and my wife is pregnant and I'm hurt and I can't hold a job because I've been going through jobs uh, over the Yeah, the challenge week. was when he came, once he came home, his back was not the same. So now it's either the job, he can't stand for too long and he can't sit for too long. So you're talking about working at a fast food restaurant and you and you can't stand up for the whole shift or you you got to sit down, you know, at yeah. this job. You even in, even in office and corporate, the problem was um, I couldn't sit down at the desk too long. I would always get up, things like that. Um, and it became a disturbance. So getting married, um, especially at the ages that we got married at, I think for me... A misconception was that, yeah, I knew we would have hardships, but I had no idea we would experience hardships so early in our marriage. Um, literally everything that we had planned was now crumbling and falling apart. Um, and then there really wasn't a, to me, there was no way that I could see a hope for what we could do. At that time, we were not doing photography, not doing videography, didn't have that at all. Um, I had given up my dream job at Disney because I chose um, to stay closer to family because I was having a high-risk pregnancy So twins. with twins. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it's going to give that up. Focus on motherhood, parenthood, all this. Oh, you're welcome, sweet girl. Love you. And just focus on parenthood, which is something that I really wanted. I wanted to become a mom. Um, but it was still hard because I realized that I had put a lot of my identity into my career and what I was doing at that time. So now when I, you know, going through pregnancy, your body changing, it's like sometimes you don't recognize who you are anymore. Um, but then also realizing that you didn't have the same, um, I had more than a career. I also had like a passion for dance. I had a passion for acting, those things. So even having to put that on hold, it was very hard for me. And now I realized that my identity was rooted in that area. So I ended up falling into postpartum depression mm. after having the kids. And he was very much aware that I was like off, you know, something was going on with me. So the way that he stepped in, and now I can see that God allowed him to even be home with us during that time mm. because I needed him. I don't think I yeah. would have been able to actually be a mom on my own because we would have probably moved um, with you going in the military and yeah. stuff. And I wouldn't yeah. have been able to do it by myself. Mm -mm. I would not have. <laughs> and you would have been, you know, having to go, I don't know, missions. Do whatever I'm supposed to do, right. yeah. Right. And I, I, don't, I, I couldn't have done it because it was a lot for me. It was a lot. So I see God's grace in that. But, you definitely had a plan for it. But going through it at the time, nah, I didn't see how, I didn't see how God was in it. I didn't ha see how it was actually for my good. Um, all I could see was that we was in my parents' house. And I'm like, uh-uh, I need to get up out of here. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go. I love my parents. Love y'all. Love you so much. But, you know, when you're a grown adult, and then you're still in your parents' household, you, you know, you, you just got that. Not, you aren't just a grown adult in your parents' house because you were an adult before we got married. What I'm saying is we were a grown adult, married, <laughs> married. with now pregnant. Kids. Kids on the way. Yeah, yeah, so you adult, adult, and then you like still your parents' household. That thing is just, it's a different type of annoyance, okay? <laughs> um, but yeah. after a while, that annoyance and that, that level of anger really started to fester in my heart and mm. now be pointed towards him. Mm. So as far as my level of being able to communicate with him, there was no communication. There was argument. Every time we went to talk, it was going to be a fight. <laughs> it was going to be a fight. And we just, we could never have a conversation that didn't lead into an argument. I know for you, you had ended up shutting down for a long time. He just stopped talking um, because he was trying to keep the peace. And I don't blame him. Now, now, I was mad then. He, he didn't talk for a while. Mm-mm. So when what happened was with me not talking, you know, it just everything just built up like any like anything would. And um, oh, 
the fight. Yeah. Yeah. One night, um, I wanted to go to the movies, I think with my sister or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came, I said, Nicole, can I go? Can I go to the movies? And Just I don't know what went through her head. I don't know if it was more so me being inconsiderate, the fact that she was pregnant, leaving her alone. They were born um, by that time. The kids were born. Yes, but, they were born. Yeah, for in my head, what was going on was selfishness. I couldn't see that you actually needed a break because you were helping. Like, he was helping with the kids day and night. He would be up at night more than me. I would, most of the time... I was extremely exhausted after I had the kids. Extremely yeah. tired. And it lasted so much longer than I thought it would. Because I thought I was just going to be tired for the, like, right after I had them. But I was tired months after I had them. Yeah. And at night, I would struggle to stay awake. Like, there was times I would have, like, hold them. And, like, he would have to catch a baby because I would be falling asleep. And the baby's kind of, like, falling on my arm. So he had to catch the baby. <laughs> and, but he would be up most of the time at night. And I would prepare the bottles and stuff. And he would be feeding them with my mom. And he was so, like, hands-on with the kids their whole life. Always hands-on. Really great dad. Always. <laughs> For me, I began to get really um, dependent on that. So I couldn't see when he was tired. I'm just like, I got really used to it. I got a little spoiled probably with how much he was helping. And when he was like, I want to go to a movie. I'm like, wait, the kids are still awake. I need your help. You can't leave me. You can't leave me by myself. Like, I, this is too much. This is too much. I would just get overwhelmed really quick. And so he said he wanted to go to some movies. And I was just like, what? You can't go. But this time was different. Usually he was quiet, things like that, just let it go. But he was real tired. I, I believe he had hit. I personally feel like you had been, you had hit a burnt out moment. So you can you can talk about it a little bit. But. No, I was just I was just like you know, this is frustrating. You know all this stuff I do and I can't go see a movie. You know, um, but we started fighting and you know. Things were said. Things were said. You know, when you one one of the things, you know, when you're married, when you're this close to somebody, when you learn as much as you do learn about people, you tend to use it as ammo sometimes. Especially when you're mad. Especially when you you're can, mad. You're the things that you you're should the closest love. person. You're yeah. the closest thing to that person. So that when you speak, you gotta watch your words because you can yeah. You, yeah, you can hurt. do some damage some damage i just remember i don't even remember all the words that we exchanged we was exchanging them though but i remember taking off my ring and throwing it at him and then i threw it in the trash yeah i said you know what you want me to leave that I'm was gone. that was the straw that I'm was the gone. straw that you that know broke and it. and so and, and that and that and and with that you know i left didn't look back then didn't care started a whole other relationship outside the marriage you know just two months being you know i guess separated two it was no four we were separated for, for about four, four months. months and i just started a whole other relationship i said you know what you know i'm just gonna use this relationship you know that this person is not doing what nicole's not and you know i just had all these selfish mentalities of trying to fill the lack with somebody else fill the void with this other relationship um and with that came my kids got involved you know we started talking about custody and divorce and things that we didn't expect to be talking about um and it hurt you know so you know towards the latter end of it what happened was i started getting overwhelmed with wanting to be with the kids wanting to be with nicole wanting to be with my family um and it's selfish because i was like i don't want her to be with nobody <laughs> He didn't want me to be with nobody else, but, but he he just jumped jumped into another relationship, whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, but but, I, but I'll yeah. say I just got I got really overwhelmed with that feeling. It's I had I had a lot of time to to think, you know, obviously look back, you know, remember, you know, why did I get married? Why did I choose to be in this relationship? Why did I marry Nicole? What what was the you know? You just start asking yourself all of these questions, self reflect, really. Uh, because that had to be a key focus in order for me to, to want to change. I had the desire, but I didn't have the substance to change. Does that make sense? I, I, I yeah, I wanted to go home, but I couldn't get past what I what I saw or what we experienced or my selfishness or her selfishness that she wasn't gonna address. Like all these things, I had all these excuses of why 
I'm like, I want to go home, but but nah, or you know. So, but the sad part was, I kept giving myself the okay to sin, um, the, the okay to be outside of my covenant. Um, so it's just hypocritical at that point. Um, so for me, I had to sit down. God sat me down, and a Sunday came around. Um, on one of the Sundays, I went to church. Sitting here outside my marriage is still going to church. Still terrible. going to church. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyway, one of the pastor said, he said, your family's waiting on you. And it was just the way he said it. And I'm like, yeah, it's time to go home. Um, you know, I'm going to stop worrying about the what, the how. I'm going to allow God to rewrite me, my mind. Um, there's a lot of things that I was internalizing, but I'm going to give it to God to allow him to be the one to give her the he understanding. Did. He did. Um, so, you know, because there, and, but, but most importantly, like the relationship part, God was going to take care of, but I had to take care of what caused me or triggered me to start a whole nother relationship. What, what, you know, what did I have to have in my mind to say, you know, that that was okay because I know that that was something I didn't want to repeat. It was something I didn't want to continue. Um, you know, I, you know, that involved emotions. So, you know, I really had to say, God, you know, remove the taste or the desire for me to step outside of my marriage. Um, you know, show me and light the fire, you know, flip the switch on for my wife. Um, you know, like, like I've never seen, you know, it's just so many different prayers to try to rekindle what I told myself wasn't there anymore. Um, and God restored it. God gave it back. Um, and so I definitely say it was a journey. It wasn't easy. Yeah. You know, I had to prove, um, you know, myself to God, prove myself to my wife as far as uh, being committed and being faithful, uh, because going through something like that, regardless of who was wrong or who was right, you know, I took it the extra mile. You know, I did the most. Uh, and so uh, after after going through all of that, we we finally were able to slowly re rekindle the trust. We had some bumps and hiccups along the road, but we were able to get back to a point where we said, you know what? It hasn't happened. And now it's no longer a issue or, 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 or a bad memory. It's yeah. now a testimony that we can it's use. It's our testimony. It's our testimony. It just is. It, just it is. is what it is. <laughs> Shoulder. <laughs> And we live so in our lives. Anyone, anyone can overcome it. You just have to make sure that you know that marriage is a selfless thing. Yes. That marriage is a selfless relationship that you devote to God and your spouse and your woman and your husband. Um, you know, it's not about you. It's about what yeah. you want. God wants together. Yeah. Um, you know, because that's what will last. God's substance will last. Anything you don't understand or can't get through, God can clearly get through to your spouse in a way that you can't. Um, and so, and ultimately nothing, nothing, nothing calls for infidelity, having relationships outside of marriage yeah. is uncalled for. It's not worth it. It's not worth There's it. There's nothing like having a, as they say, monogamous relationship. Yeah. But there's nothing like having a covenant. Yeah. God and the two of you. Yeah. Ain't nothing like it. It's y'all and God and you're unstoppable. And the sad part was, I will say this, it wasn't the same. You know, there's nothing like being married to my wife, the one that God called for me. Always remember that. It's nothing like the one God called for you. Yeah. Because they can only do and fill the spaces that God has for them to fill. This is true. The enemy will tell you otherwise. So watch out. So our next question is I actually throw in this one because it's an anonymous question. Okay. It says, "What is the key for y'all staying married?" Staying married. The marriage, being married, is cool. You know, it's, it's cool. But having fun with your spouse. Yeah. Being able to be explore, friends. be friends. We are best you know? friends. We are legit yes, we are. best yes, friends. Are. I care about him mm -hmm. oh. more than like just being like in a relationship but I legit like want him to be happy and he legit wants me to be happy and we make sure that we're taking care of each other in that way bun to bun bun to bun bun to bun <laughs> but no so you know the key for us to staying married is to Why to keep God right? I would say definitely keep God first um to always be best friends um and to always 
develop new ways to explore and and, and, yes. and you know each other as far as experience new things together experience new things if you have families um you know make sure you incorporate love within everything that you do they're definitely definitely keeping the keeping god first keeping the love and just being adventurous um and trying new things get creative with your schedules and however that may look yeah. so thank you whoever asked that question so our next question comes from mkc consulting you can find them on instagram at the link below they said how do you keep the love alive you know Is this pg oh. right we're keeping this pg right I'm just playing. No. no, I will say Can encourage I, encourage okay. each other. Encourage continue each to other, motivate okay. each other. Speak to each other's lives. Um, you know, I'll say as far as keeping the love part aspect of it alive. Yeah. Compliment each other. Mm -hmm. Talk about their strengths and why they're, why they're strong in that area. Mm -hmm. How it has an impact on you. How it affects yeah. you. Um, Being able to genuinely be happy for each other. Um, especially when good things happen in life and also like really being able to like, I, I think it was, it's that compassion piece and even empathy because it helps you to like put yourself in their shoes and where they are. And like, well, at least for me, for you, that's what I like doing. I like being able to like, when you accomplish something that's amazing, I feel like, I feel so happy for you. Like genuinely, like just so excited. Yeah. Um, but also, like, I appreciate how you you help me to keep the love alive, even because mm. of how you love me and how you're you are so attentive to what I need, and you actually pay attention to me. You more. gotta pay attention. Yeah, you have to pay attention you to pay. everything, small things. A lot of times, when you get in relationships, you can get complacent. Yeah, you can and get you can, real complacent. You can think that you know somebody, and the reality is. We're you got constantly a lot left. changing. You got a lot left to learn. Yes, and we're constantly changing, constantly mm -hmm. evolving. So you have to constantly be paying attention. Like, what do you need? What is your favorite thing now? What is like what what you know, what way do you want me to love you? And don't be afraid to ask how your partner what your partner needs. Like mm -hmm. if you can ask what do you need. Yeah, initiative is do. a big part you, of it. Yeah. Um, but one thing I will say is making sure your love is the same in public as it is in private. Yeah. To an extent, I'll say, you know, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah. you can't do certain things. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that what happens is when you, when your spouse knows that you are going to love them in the midst of whether it's a crowd, whether it's in public, yeah. at the store, you know, that yeah, love care. keeps going. That's that, in my opinion, is the best one of the best ways to keep the love alive is to stay consistent in every medium. If you're at church, if you're at home, if you're at work, if you're at the store, if you're in public, if you're playing, wherever, whatever it is, you guys are still showing love on a public scale and in a private scale so that, you know, it just remains consistent. It just remains consistent. And your spouse can say, it's wow, real. like they love me, you know, when they're hanging out with their friends or they're still willing to show me love. Yeah, because I know for me personally, when we're in public, he I love how he's he always talks about me. And it's it's embarrassing a little bit, but when we get home, I'm like, man, you was talking about me. Okay, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some love in private, you Ooh. know what I mean? But um it's just it's just the little things, yeah. Yeah. So thank you, MKC, for that spicy MKC, <laughs> MKC for that spicy, spicy, question. spicy question. But anyway, um, the next question is from Amanda. Do past issues ever come up? If so, how yes. do you handle them? Um, so, I'll say... Not... When, well... Yeah, I'll say at this point in our marriage, no. No. And it's because we, we do a lot of groundwork and we've done a lot of groundwork from the point of us deciding to stay married Um. Uh, we've done a lot of counseling with wise counselors. But also, Shout we've, we've, we've oh, forgiven yeah. each other. Yeah, genuinely. Um, genuinely forgive. Because a lot of times what happens is yeah. when something comes up, you can tend to go back and grab the thing that occurred and throw it. Like, we right. were talking about ammo, you know, and, and oh, well, this you're bringing this up again and this up yeah. again. And it causes cycles. Even if you, what happens is if you, if you've, if you've, if you're dealing with unforgiveness and you have not forgiven your spouse, if you decide to use what may have happened or things and use it as ammo or bring it up again, you can actually cause your spouse or a person to go back 
into the and cycle. And here's the thing. And mm-hmm. oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's just, it's just basically saying, you know, we we forgiven each other, um, and we know that we're not out to hurt each other. We're right. not out. Our conversations. On if we disagree, we disagree. But it stays at a disagreement. Everybody disagrees. We're human. And the thing is, when when you decide to truly, uh, like forgive, like you were saying. And also repent. So the word repent itself is one, asking for forgiveness, but two, to turn away from all of that stuff. Whatever it was, Mm -hmm. it's got to be different. So for us, when we came back, things were not the same. It was completely different from from how we interacted to where we go. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things were so different. And in that way, we were able to build this level of our level of trust Mm -hmm. um, that it's just it's it's yeah yeah but i'll say you know if not even we're talking about past issues but if issues period do come up we address them together yeah we 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 collectively sit down and we come from an understanding place no matter what's said and we deal with it like adults like as as friends and better the best part is we deal with it like teammates because we're on the same, same team. team. I don't want anything bad for her. She doesn't want, want anything, anything bad, bad for, for me. And that yeah. is something that is understood. There's nothing I'm going to say that's going to intentionally hurt you. I will not put my hands on you. Anything I act or speak or my mind, how I think towards you. Yeah. I don't say you get on my nerves in my head. Like these are things you do. How I speak verbally and mentally and in my heart has yeah. nothing to do with any malice or negative thing to you. Yeah. And that's what's been said. That's what's been shown. Right. And it's vice versa. So and when if we go there to, is go ahead. any mm-hmm. in unintentional like things, like I may say something to you unintentionally of like, you know, maybe a joke or something, but it's it's not funny, you know, maybe serious or whatever. Mm-hmm. And for you, you, we've created a safe space in communication to where he can come up and tell me, hey, I was offended by this, yeah. and I can do the same for you. I was offended by what this, and, this. and we say okay, it we won't say happen our piece, again, won't happen whatever yeah. it is we gotta say, and you move on. So thank you, Amanda, for that question. Yes. But it also leads it to my boy Marcus's quest. Marcus's next question. Yes. It says, "What are some of you guys' resolve tactics after fights?" Um, Number one, we don't. We fight. don't. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We don't fight. We don't fight. We make the choice. We make the choice. Hear me. Because some people be like, what you mean you can't fight? It's a legit choice to fight. It's a choice. If somebody comes up to you and they say, yo, homie, square up. We about to fight. All that stuff. You don't have to fight them. You don't, you don't have to fight. What? You're a punk? That's the worst thing you say? Okay. All right. We walking away. You're like, so it's legit. <laughs> Sorry. It's really a choice to somebody call fight. You, somebody call you a punk? Ain't nobody call me a punk because I can't handle saying. my business. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Okay. I'm a saying. little hood. I get a little um, hood sometimes. Somebody called you a punk? Um, no, no, ain't nobody call me a punk. But what I'm saying <laughs> is it's a legit choice to fight. You can have disagreements. You cannot agree. But you can do it in a way that you can communicate that. That's the most important thing. You always want to be able to communicate the, the place that you're mm-hmm. at. But yeah, yeah, but even, but I'll say, I'll say setting guidelines mm-hmm. on when things occur, how you will act. So you can hold each other to the standard of this is not how we're supposed to be mm-hmm. functioning. This is what we said we we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll say our, if after we disagree, we understand we disagree and either are okay with that or we figure out why and try to find a medium mm-hmm. like this and there yeah. are t- there are times where we don't table discussions we're not gonna be like table but i'll say there's times where we need to sit and chew on what the other person has said so if we have a disagreement and i may not be seeing eye to eye i gotta take time to process and that's usually me <laughs> i'm gonna be honest that's usually me mm-hmm. he'll say something and i'll be like no, I don't feel that way. But I'm like, I've learned over time because he's ended up being right so many times because we, we work together and everything. So we we have to know how to communicate about disagreements. But he's ended up being right so much. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dang. Mm-hmm. All right, so now I've gotten to the point where if he says something, I may not get it right now, but I'm going to sit at least and try to wait to get an understanding or sit and try to, you know, marinate on it and be like, well maybe this can make sense here and then he does the same thing he does it for me so often like 
if there's ever anything we're not agreeing on, he really always tries to hear what I'm saying and even apply it. That's what I love. I'm grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Even when I be wrong sometimes. <laughs> or or just, just simply <laughs> pray. Yes. That. Prayer. Prayer God is. God can do God any can do and it. everything. He can do all things. All things. But fail. Because he fail. never lost a battle. He's <laughs> never lost. Yes, he's never lost. Um, so next questions. We have two questions from the same people. Okay. Um, Brandon, um, I'll put his link is down below. Um, he said, "What was the biggest challenges you faced as a married couple?" That's but amazing. you know, we did we have answered that when we oh, talked yeah. about our separation. Yes, the separation. Um, and the next question we have from Sierra. She says, um, "You simply know, what, Sierra love. <laughs> simply Sierra love." What else? She says. What is the biggest obstacle y'all had to face? And that was the biggest yes. obstacle, which was separation. that separation. Um, but she also asked a second question. She said, how often do y'all pray together? I'm going to let you answer this one. Okay, so here's the drill. When it comes to prayer, um, one thing we are not is religious about prayer. Prayer is something that flows from our heart. And mm. um, we do it as led by the spirit yeah there are times though where we really try to consecrate ourselves um and i'll tell you this we pray we pray pretty often i'm not gonna lie this is is a lot but <laughs> <laughs> it's because like we've just learned like when i tell you literally god for is, our lifestyle it works for us yeah so there's time it's first thing we wake up that's a given every time we wake up in the morning um, when we get in the car to drive, noon, noon every day. at noon every day. every day we pray. Every day. Um, now hear me again. This is not something like that. God's like, you must pray to me at this and this time. And then it's, no. just, what it's just in our hearts. It's just in our hearts. It keeps us aligned. It keeps our minds at ease. It keeps at us peace. at peace. Yes. You'd be surprised how much you can pray and release and be perfect. Yeah, we just day. let it all go to God. Sometimes we've had times where we just turn on our worship music. We just, we cry to God. Well, not often, but I cry more than him. And yeah, then, so we, we um, pray a lot. Now her next question. I'm sorry. That was, I'm just having a moment. Y'all, Valentine's Day is like. So her next question is, is it hard for either of you to apologize? No. No. Not at this. Not at, No. No, because it, it, there has been a point where it was difficult for us to say sorry. We, we don't like for pride to have a place. Yeah. Because um, if you let, the thing about it is, for me, I know after we went through, like, even after we went through a time of separation, mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be mad at you. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to live without you, which mm -hmm. is not something that I want because yeah. I love you so much. And so I know when things happen, when I'm wrong, I'd be like, look, let's move on. Let's move forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> and he, the way he forgives me is quick. It's loving. And it's, it's like the love of God. It's like quick. <laughs> and that's the same for me. If he ever um, needs to apologize for something, I'm like, I forgive you. Let's move forward. Yeah. Let's move on. Cause it's just yeah. there's so much life to live and you don't know. You don't you, know, you don't waste. know when a person's time is. You don't know um you don't know anything that can go on. But for you while we're able bodied, while we're here, while we're at this age, to just say, I love you, I forgive you, let's live. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'm gun ho for it. I'll I'll say sorry quick. Mm -hmm. I'll say sorry. Yeah, it's not hard. Thank you, Sierra, for that question. By the love way, Sierra you. is Nicole's cousin. I love my cousin, Sierra. <laughs> so, why you look at the thing while you were saying that? I'm sorry. I love my cousin, Sierra. I'm looking at the screen. I gotta look at you. <laughs> Our next question is from Michelle Noble. Yay! And, oh, by the way, she has two links. Yes. They have a wedding planning company at the Noble Agenda. And they have a wedding venue that's coming soon at the Noble Farm. Wait, I just have to say how we met. We were their wedding photographers yes. and videographers. Yes, yes, love, we miss Favorite. them. We miss you guys, we miss you guys. Um, they. So she said, what specific things do y'all do 
to keep God the center of your marriage. Yes. Do you guys, do you do daily prayers together, special time each day for reading the word, you know, et cetera? What do you guys do? I will definitely say it. it is in in connection with our last question i would definitely say um it is always just keeping god first um and referencing him in everything that we do in our decisions and our walk um because his his way and his truth always shines and we're yeah. able to see that um so in i a real way in a real way and so it's pretty cool when you can say like hey like god did this and well when you go to God together, like in prayer and things like that, and yes. both of you are aware of what you prayed for and to see God do it in front of your face, yes. it's just like, yes. And I'm going to say praying. this little little testimony within the whole testimony video. But when we first got married, he was a very strong giver and tither. He believed in it, believed in giving. So what tithing is, is giving God your first, your, your, first, ten, fruits. your first fruit, your 10% out of what you make off from, the top off the top the first off thing you the do, top as soon as you get that as deposit as soon as you get it you, you pay him high. you pay him and that was pay how Lord, that was what he what believed he i'm gonna be honest my heart was not there i'm like look churches i feel like they they're greedy i feel like they want to steal i feel like you know the pastors may take the money do what they want to do and that was in my mind that was in my heart but i'll say this when i decided to one, submit under my husband. Submitting is not a, a weak thing or like a, a control of thing, but submitting is truly allowing him to be the leader. And when we started giving our tithe out of the first fruit to God, we saw our lives transform financially, spiritually, uh, marriage wise family wise i mean truly truly transformed but it's it's not so much of like sometimes you may not have money to give but it's that heart to give god your first that heart to trust god that faith mm -hmm. and putting the faith in god in that area allowed us to put him first in other areas too even in maybe even our decision making yeah. Yeah. Where we have to just go to him, like you were saying, just put him first, like going yeah. to him, praying about what we have to do every step of the way. So we're constantly allowing God to be in our day, in our whole day. In our whole day. Yeah. And it works, and it works. Yeah. So thank you for that question. Her second question is, do y'all have date night or some other special time carved out just for y'all? We don't have the tip what's called the typical date night the typical because we don't have family here and we also do not we have a set have babysitter like a set babysitter or anybody like that yeah um so we have date night we have a family date night we do um you and know, we also have our room yeah we have our room <laughs> we got our room. you know we have our room but i'll say we just find time and we take time where we are to enjoy it yeah um you and know. It, it may even be where we are in the car the kids just took a nap we start singing a song together or just talking about each other's day the most important part to me is yes we are parents and our kids absolutely are important to us mm -hmm. no no keep talking keep our talking. kids are absolutely our kids are absolutely important to us but we are married first mm -hmm. and i'm gonna be honest that was something i struggled with when i first became a mom i was instantly like Okay, my babies, my babies, my babies. You know, which, and really, which is understandable. Which is understandable, which is understandable. And, it's, and it's how we should be. It's how we should love our kids. But it's so important to be able to pour back into your marriage because the reality is, your kids are gonna grow up one day, and y'all gonna be alone. But it's gonna be like, do you know who your spouse is? You know, are you gonna be like, who is this stranger in my house? You know what I mean? And unfortunately, a lot of couples go through issues once they have empty nests because then it's like. <laughs> I didn't actually spend time with you. I was with the kids all yeah. the time. So we really try to like, even though we're with our family and stuff, we really try to like make sure we're giving each other some love too. Yes. And well, attention. That's that's our date nights. We just pick time, find time, no matter where we are, to find zone it. out and focus on each other. For now. Until we get that babysitter though. Oh, we we definitely go <laughs> <laughs> We definitely gonna be going out. Okay.
Thank you for that question, Michelle. Dustin, we love y'all. Congratulations love you on your new baby, new family. They and got a little baby. Yes. So. All right. So next question is anonymous. Mm -hmm. And it is how do you genuinely move forward after being betrayed by your spouse? It's hard to trust when the wound is not healed and hasn't been properly addressed. I'll first say this. It is very true what you're saying about uh, when a wound isn't healed and hasn't been addressed, it's hard. Because if you think about it, even like a, I'll say a gunshot wound, if it's, if you get shot and the wound is still open and no one tends to it, no doctor looks at it, no nurse or anything, then the wound actually gets worse and it can even get infected. Um, so it's important when there is hurt in a relationship and when there has been betrayal in a relationship to actually be address able to it. address it and not just kind of skirt over it and but to actually be able to get into that thing get to the root of what caused it and get it out it cannot stay so yeah. for us both we both yeah. have betrayed each other we've had we both experienced infidelity for me i had an ex that you know tried to come back in my life things like that and i ended up getting caught up in that and I had to be able to communicate that with him and face him with that, which was something that I felt like, I actually told myself I would go to the grave with. And I felt like I I couldn't communicate it, I couldn't say it, cause I couldn't even face it myself. Mm. Um, so for me, I had to realize that how was he and even our marriage going to be able to be free to grow if it has an infection in it and even a secret can be an infection to a marriage. You need to keep free. You need to keep yourself free for even yourself. Even if you're single, whatever it may be, you don't need to carry around secrets your whole life. That's not a way to live in freedom. And the reality is God allows us to come to him, to repent, to tell yeah. our secrets, to release those things. You gotta receive the fullness of your salvation. Yes, so you can receive. For yourself first. Yes, for yourself. And then you can even receive the fullness of who God has called you to be freely. Yeah. Um. So addressing it is the most important thing to do. And also making sure that that infection is not in the marriage that those the, any desire to be outside of your marriage all of those things have to be gone yeah. um on both parts yeah, so that's on for the, me on, yeah. the, on the on the receiving end though you know even receiving that information mm -hmm. um you know quickly forgive i just said i forgive you um you know because i knew how i felt i know how i felt about my wife I know what I appreciated and what I loved about her, and I didn't equate the thing that she, the things that she's done to who she was, um, because it doesn't take, it didn't take away from, you know, what I thought of her. We all make mistakes, you know. I, I made mistakes, um, you know, and 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 we don't, we all don't necessarily make the same mistakes. Yeah. So it's it's something that we don't have to do, um, mm -hmm. but in different ways, people do make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Yes, but but you know, definitely being able to address something, um, being able to own up to what you've done, um, start or create, or have a track record of consistency as far as building trust. Yeah. Um, developing um, a habit of openness. Mm -hmm. As far as if there's anything going on hidden so that nothing builds up and creates something major over yes. time, um, you know, because there there are in order to commit such things outside of marriage or to betray your spouse, there has to be a buildup or in this case, there has to be a why. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, you know, being able to even for this, the, the, for me, you know, having a relationship, you know, stepping outside of my marriage and and breaking my covenant. You know, there had to be, I had to understand, well, what would cause me to do so? What were the things inside of me that would cause me to uh, not only view my wife as, 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 as my partner, but now someone that I could replace her with? Like, like there were so many thoughts you have to get to and get to the root and say, God, show me, God, uproot these things. You know, God, why, why do I have this desire? What, what in yeah. me is unfinished or yeah. what in me is not whole? Cause the thing is, I think that it's, it's, being able to ask your spouse those questions is important, but being able to ask yourself from the who for the person or the spouse who have, may have betrayed someone, being able to ask yourself why, being able to ask yourself um, 
you know, how did you get to that point, things like that. What it will do is allow you to create your boundaries within your own self and your own heart and know what you don't need to have around you. Know what yeah, places you can you cut the weed yeah. from the roots so it won't yeah, go back. Absolutely. So um, we've had we've had to have some very difficult conversations mm-hmm. um, for both of us, mm-hmm. and it has only led to our growth. Because the reality is, we had difficult conversations. We also had some deliverance, <laughs> some real deliverance, <laughs> and um, yeah. we're grateful and we're so thankful because we had wise counsel. Next question is from Yolanda. Yolanda she-, um, she says. What does it mean to cover your spouse? I will say one of the ways to cover your spouse is definitely first and foremost in prayer. Um, When you are married to someone, you are the closest thing to them. So you see their strengths and you see their flaws. Um, You see what they desire and aspire to do and reach and goals and work and things like that for dreams. Um, So you have the ability to be able to pray um, for them you know, in the spirit and go before them, God, cover them at work, cover them, you know, with this, prepare them for this interview, um, you know, to be able to basically pray a covering for your spouse and your wife, for the things she may see or not see, you know, God protect her, keep her mind, keep her full of joy throughout the day, allow her to have mm-hmm. joys filled with peace and not a you know, you know, anger, you know, you know, you, you, you start, you start speaking into the spirit, the things you desire to see for your spouse, um, and how you want their lives to be. And that, so prayer is definitely one way to, you know, cover your spouse. Um, and I'll say for me, um, along with that, along with prayer mm-hmm. and covering, even noticing if they're having tough times, if they're going through things and sometimes it's not completely outward because for him, he, I would say, uh, like when he's going through more stressful things and times like that, he's, he's, he carries it well. He don't, he don't really fold under pressure, (laughs) but I know when he has a lot on his plate and when he has a lot to do. So I will go, you know, extra mile to make sure that, um, I'm supporting him and what he needs. So I'll ask him, I'll just simply ask, Hey, what help do you need today? How can I pray for you today? what what is it what do you dream about what what is it you want to accomplish and then that way i can know how i can be a better covering and support yeah. to you so that's yeah. for me what one thing i i like to do all right guys if you haven't already definitely go down and subscribe hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos mm-hmm. and give this video a big thumbs, thumbs up, up. And let us know in the comments, guys, how you guys are doing. We've missed you guys. I know it's been a week, but we're back. And we've definitely been uploading this video. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And now it's here. So we appreciate it. Shouts out to love. Shouts out to marriage. And shout out to you. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. We love y'all. Peace, Cole fam. It's that cold fam.